Of course, we can't have just one magnetic charge or magnetic monopole question, so let's play with another. The statement reads, suppose you had an electric charge QE and a magnetic monopole QM. The field of the electric charge and magnetic monopole are uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, QE over script R squared in the script R hat direction, B is equal to mu naught over 4 pi, QM over script R squared R hat direction. Again, pretty symmetric. Find the total angular momentum stored in the fields if the two charges are separated by distance d. All right, let's go ahead and draw it out. So we have QE centered at the uh, origin of the xz plane, and then we have QM some distance d above QE on the z-axis. Again, makes life easy setting it up this way. So we have source coordinate r to some point and QM coordinate r prime, some theta, uh, some angle theta. All right, so what we need to do is modify these equations for the script R, which is a separation vector for each of these fields, respectively. So E goes to QE over 4 pi epsilon naught, uh, vector R over R cubed, okay, which we can turn that into a unit vector by taking the magnitude and getting rid of one of the R cubes. Uh, but similarly, what we have here is that B is equal to mu naught QM over 4 pi R prime R prime cubed, now, if we want to write this in terms of uh, the electric fields R, then we need to take into account uh, R prime is R minus D in the Z hat direction. And then we have to use uh, what you would say uh, uh, law of cosines. So R squared plus D squared minus 2RD cosine theta to 3 halves power, since that's the square root. Um, okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and chug it on through. We see that we have the E field and the B field, and we need to take the cross product to find the linear momentum density. And so we're left with the cross product after we factor out all the uh, constants to one side and all the distance products to the right side. And we're left with the cross product to R cross R minus DZ. If we distribute that, uh, we see that we get uh, R cross R, which goes to zero. No surprise there. And we have minus d r cross z, and we just simplify the two uh, factors on the left and right hand side accordingly, fact or simplify them down. And so what we're actually left with is uh, g is equal to negative mu naught q e q m d over four pi squared times r cross z over r cubed times r squared plus d squared minus two r d cosine theta to the three f's power. All right. So what's cool about this is that uh, the angular momentum density is therefore L cross, or excuse me, L equal R cross G. So we're left with the big old factor out front, uh, which we'll call beta just to get rid of it, carrying it around. And we're, we have R cross R cross Z. All right, but as you remember, R cross R cross Z is equal to R times R dot Z hat minus Z hat R dot R. So we're left with a r squared cosine theta due to the r component having a um, uh, x, y, and z component breakdown again, and r dot r is 1, so we're good there. Um, again, with the unit vectors, so that's r squared. Again, we use this tool to trade x and y components will integrate to 0, so we're left with r cross r cross z, um, uh, the z component only, which gives us a r squared cosine theta cosine theta from the r hat minus r squared and so we factor out an r squared and we get cosine squared minus one push that all into the integral where again we made the substitution for beta we're going from zero to two pi zero to pi and then zero to r in our uh, uh spherical coordinate system we see that we have r squared canceling uh so we have the r squared in the numerator and the r squared from the d tau canceling with the r over three, or excuse me, r cubed in the denominator. And so what we can do now is break this integral up, again, separating the uh, phi angle, or phi integral up, since it's not related to the other ones. And now you see we have r and theta being mixed in this fraction. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a u sub, where u is equal to cosine theta, du is equal to negative sine theta d theta, so u at pi is equal to negative 1, and u at 0 is equal to 1. Let's plug it into cosine, you get that. 
And what we see here is that a factor of 2 pi cancels with the 16 pi squared that came from the phi integral. The u sub was applied and we factored everything in. Uh, the, notice that the negative on the du allows us to flip the uh, order of integration here. And then the negative from uh, the, negative from the uh, fraction before it allows us to switch the order of u squared minus 1 to 1 minus u squared. So two, the uh, fractions, or excuse me, the negative signs actually cancel, and we reverse the order of the numerator in order to switch the order of integration. So that's where all the negative signs go, if you're keeping track. The inner uh, integral, the r integral, is, well, run that through. Uh, it gets really messy, and we see that we have ru minus d, uh, and then that denominator you see there. But that's, in, that's evaluated from 0 to uh, infinity which breaks down really quickly, as you see, since uh, infinity will make some cancellations. So with that, you see that uh, uh, on the second fraction there, after we put in zero, we get d canceling with d, and we're left with u plus one over d times one minus u squared. Okay, now we're left with the negative one to one integral, the du integral, and we see here that the when we substitute in this result, the d cancels with the uh, set the uh, d from above in the uh, constants, and uh, we also see that when we plug this in, the uh, one minus u squared from the fraction before will cancel with the denominator, so we're left with u plus one du. Okay, that's a pretty quick integral to deal with, and we see that that yields a, uh, a fraction of two. Okay, um, pretty good there, I would say. And uh, from there, yeah, if we simplify it down to L equal mu naught QE QM over 4 pi in the Z at direction. Not too bad, probably expected. And uh, we definitely have a lot of notes ready for you in the description, so go ahead and check them out.